What's going on folks? You're watching Archetype of Man. I'm out on the range today, having a good time. But we're gonna put this down. We're gonna talk about this. This is Shooting to Live by Fairburn and Sykes. And I think this is a book that any gun person, self-defense trainee, enthusiast, or whatever, should take a look at. So for those that don't know, W.E. Fairburn and E.A. Sykes are kind of the forerunners of practical shooting, at least in a modern context. Uh, they were right there at the cusp of when clandestine intelligence gathering uh, and all the 007 stuff kind of took off. So a lot of people are familiar with the Fairburn and Sykes dagger, rolling a picture of that. Um, same guys. So they collaborated on this book and it was right about the time that they had a falling out uh, that this came out. So it's important to note that things have changed. Uh, and I don't want to give away too much of the book, but as you're reading this, you will kind of see there's a discussion, um, and that discussion really hasn't changed between revolvers and automatics, as they call them, or semi-autos. Obviously, Fairburn and Sykes couldn't have uh, foreseen guns like this. Um, the guns, the semi-automatic pistols of that era were much more limited. Think Colt 1903s, 1911s, um, Lugers, Mausers. There wasn't a whole lot like there is now. So the book was published in 1942, I believe. Now I gotta double check it just to, just to make sure. Yes, the original edition was 1942. Uh, the reprint was 1979 and then 2008. So they added a, a foreword and some little uh, additions to it, but they didn't take anything away. So uh, this book and their experiences comes from their time during the Shanghai, comes from their time serving in the Shanghai Municipal Police Force, uh, which doesn't sound that crazy until you realize this is drawing on more than 600 uh, violent a phrase as they say in the book or encounters so they had this uh, shanghai was a really rough area during that time period a lot of organized crime there was murders rapes uh, all that stuff that goes with organized crime going on and the municipal police department in shanghai uh, had to deal with that so this is drawing on the things that they learned uh, during these gunfights and other violent scuffles and it's amazing how much they put in that book in 1942, despite all the technological advances that we have had, is still very relevant today. In the book, there are some things that just haven't stood the scrutiny of time, uh, things like carrying with that around in the chamber. Now, obviously there are adherents to that philosophy even today. However misguided I feel they may be, uh, there's still people that cling to that ideology. Fairburn and Sykes did espouse that in this book, but that was going off of the guns they had then. Uh, they didn't think that remembering to flick a safety off, like most of the semi-autos had at that time, was something that uh, most people would be able to do under duress. And we do see instances even today on channels like Active Self-Protection where people go to go bang and they don't get anything because they did not disengage that safety. So there's some merit. It's definitely something you need to train around. Uh, I don't believe that having to chamber around in a self-defense situation is the ideal way, but I digress. Uh, they do make excellent points for the revolver, specifically a fit special style of revolver, uh, which for those who are unfamiliar, would not be this big. It would be a, a very smaller, think J-frame if you will. I should have brought it out here with a bobbed hammer. So it's essentially double action only. And then they would actually cut away the trigger guard here so that a gloved hand could get to the trigger without impeding or being impeded by that trigger guard. And there were some other treatments they did to it. Finger grooves, so the hand hit the same place uh, consistently every time it went for the gun. And in Shooting to Live, they espoused the uh, practicality of a gun like that, that you know, for plain clothes or concealed carry, shooting from a pocket, all the arguments that revolver enthusiasts and uh, supporters still claim today. So obviously I like both. Um, things like utilizing cover. I'll see if I can find the picture in the book, but you know, things that we should really talk about more today that we don't. So here he's showing uh, a side view and then the head-on view, or as the adversary would see, of using a lamp post or even a pillar as cover. Um, talk about the importance of speed. 
the importance of being able to get your one-handed hits in and also being comfortable shooting two-handed. Now they do say don't use the sights at close range and I think we have kind of established as a community that point shooting is a thing. Um, there are certain technological advances that obviously Fairburn and Sykes couldn't even have imagined. Red dots that allow you to remain target focused uh, and still get your hits that way single-handedly or dual-handed. And it's just, it was weird reading that book. I just finished it yesterday, but it was weird reading this book and seeing so much of what we accept as truth now um, being put in, you know, a training manual. In essence, this is what this was part of uh, even back in the 40s. So it is really cool. You know, over 80 years ago, um, a lot of this stuff that we swear by today, even though the technological advances have taken off, uh, the basics are still right here. So just a quick book review. Like I said, don't want to give too much of it away, but I highly recommend it. It's obviously not a, uh, a long read by any means. Let's, let's see, you're at less than 100 pages, guys. This is not bad, and actually some of that's the appendix. So highly recommend it. Uh, Fairburn and Sykes were, were pioneers. Um, I didn't really know of them from a shooting standpoint. I knew of them from uh, their silent killing book and things like that, which I don't want to talk about too much on here because it's not really a part of anything on the channel um, that I'm prepared to kind of rationalize. But I knew of their involvement with the Fairburn Sykes fighting knife um, in their silent killing uh, clandestine operation stuff. But this was a very cool read and thank you to my buddy uh, Mark who loaned that to me for me to read. I uh, appreciate it. So absolutely get a copy of that. I'll drop a couple links in the description if you want to order one for yourself. Um, it may be out on Kindle. I don't know. I use a Kindle a lot but reading a, a paper book is good sometimes. So <laughs> kind of fitting that this is the first completed book review on the Archetype of Man channel. Highly recommend it. Guys stay safe. Learn and practice and train. Try to be better today than you were yesterday. I'll see you next time. <music>